Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Thanks, y'all. Um, those of you who have joined already, um, this is the official debut of Ink Therapy. Um, my name is X, and I have the privilege of introducing an amazing tattoo artist, um, phenomenal artist in general, uh, Matt Stebley. He is based out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Um, does amazing work out there, but also does some amazing work with the Do South Tattoo Convention. Um, but you're gonna find all of that information coming your way in just a little bit as we get through this interview. So, um, Matt, we've known each other for maybe like a little over a year, right? And um, we met each other at the 2019 Do South Tattoo Convention. Um, that was where um, I got the title of Miss Do South. So thank you very much for introducing me to a tattoo pageant life. It's, it's very glamorous. Um, mm. And uh, I've had such a blast just being affiliated with the team, with the convention. It's it, y'all do outstanding work and are always, um, you know, getting a group of outstanding artists and outstanding people to join. So uh, this does mean a lot to me that you are the first person that I'm interviewing for Ink Therapy. Well, um, very so, honored to do it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Let's just hop right into it. So the first question that I wanted to ask you about is just about your style. How would you describe your style? Uh, that's always a hard one. It's usually something that I get asked a lot. Um, it, I've always just kind of said that it's more of a stylized, like illustrative uh, style. That there's not a whole lot of um, other ways to kind of put it. It's it's very very stylized, um, and it's just the way that I've always drawn. Um, obviously, you know it is, you know evolved over the years but it's always been kind of the style that i've that i've drawn in before even you know years and years before i started tattooing um and so i never actually put a a label on it, label to it. yeah so for the first 20 some odd years that i was doing it, it there wasn't a need to put a label on it until i started tattooing and people started to want to put a label on it whether it's like new school or traditional or things like that so um then you know, when I get asked about it, it's just like, it's just what I do. Um, and I guess if I had to put it in something, um, just calling it illustrative, because I'm I'm not a fan of neo-traditional, like, you, not, you know, of the form, but, like, using that as a, um, you know, kind of a style or or calling everything neo-traditional, because there's, it's just, that's, like, everything. If it doesn't, if it's not new school, like, um Jesse Smith and uh, or not traditional um, like Sailor Jerry type stuff, then it's that. So it's like you've taken so much stuff and putting it in one title. Um, so I just kind of go with illustrative or stylized. Yeah, no, for sure. I can definitely understand. It feels like uh, over the past years, even as like tattoo vocabulary has expanded, it feels like we're still like grouping people are like, you know, kind of like narrowing, minimizing what people are doing by putting them in these specific categories. Um, and obviously the work that you do, if, if you all have not seen his work, go to his page right now and then come right back um, so that you can see um, the amazing illustrated work that he does. It definitely is not one to just be put in a um, one specific category. Um, I see you do a lot of work um, associated with like nature, um, animals, you know, plants. Um, I guess tell me a little bit about your inspiration behind that and where that comes from. Of course, that's not the only thing that I see you do, but it's, it, it takes up a lot of, of your time. Um, no, it's definitely like my preferred subject matter is, is, is animals or, you know, uh, pretty much birds and sea life and things like that. It's just one of those things that I've, I've been around and I've been inspired by, you know, since I was, since I was a kid. Um, so it's just something that I've that I've always done, and always something that I've been drawn to. Um, so I guess that's you know whenever you say you've what are you inspired by, or um, that's definitely it because it's what I see every day or you know almost every day. Um, so that's what I'm gonna you know see and try to put down on paper. So, um, but it is definitely my preferred subject matter. Um, anything birds, 
fish, animals in, in general. Um, you know, I still do anything else, but if I had to, if I had to choose, it would definitely fall into to that category. I love that. I love that. And I know that there's some sort of connection to like a family history as well. Could you speak to a little bit um, about that and like your family connections, like artistry and, and drawing like those images in nature? Yeah, I have been, uh, I have my great grandfather uh, was Walter Anderson and he's, um, I guess a pretty well known artist in, you know, the, the South um, or from South Mississippi and um, he's got a museum and, and all that. Um, so oh, wow. <laughs> it, it's definitely growing up. It wasn't that big of a deal. You know, it was just something that I've always known. So when you grow up into it, it's not that big of a deal until you get older. And then, it, you know, people start making it that big of a deal. And then yeah. you realize that, I mean, it definitely, it definitely is cool. And I can, I did, um, uh, I guess I wasn't super into it at first. It's probably why I became a tattooer because nobody else, you know, and in my family was a was a tattooer, so it kind of gave me my own um, my own path to go down. And I never wanted to second guess myself and think that people were just buying my stuff or wanting to, you know, get tattooed by me because I was, you know, Walter Anderson's great grandson. So that that's kind of one of those chips that I always had that I had to finally get, you know let go and know that you know people most people in the tattoo industry don't give a shit you know who my great grandfather is so and uh i can thank my wife for finally getting that like through my head like hey babe no one cares like in in the tattoo industry no one like, most people don't know and then most people if they knew wouldn't care anyways so <laughs> shout out to jennifer keeping it real <laughs> i definitely think that there's a lot of um honor and privilege associated you know, with, with your grandfather's legacy. Uh, but I definitely uh, see you making, you know, a name for yourself as well. So um, I can understand, um, you know, having a little bit of tension around that and feeling as though, um, you know, you have to live up to some sort of expectation, but then also like the excitement around making a name for yourself and having people, you know, be able to recognize like the legacy that you're building. For, for yourself and your family as well. So that's and I, and I feel that I feel the chip has definitely subsided. Like it's it's one of those things that uh, I have you know over the last decade of tattooing, you know, figured out that you know it is what it is. I can I can let that let that thing go um, right. and appreciate it and take it for what it's worth. Right, as and opposed I think to that's maturing. You know, just like being an adult and growing and learning. Like after a while, it's not gonna mean that much to you then you can like you said like let that chip off your shoulder and just fall off <laughs> which i'm kind of glad that it was a chip at that point because you know it made me do what i do now so um it it definitely gave me that push to to do something different um and you know tattooing was different and that's why i kind of i guess was drawn to it so i'm i'm grateful for that chip and glad that it's off but you know glad that it was a thing at the point at, at that you know, time in my life. For sure, for sure. I love how you're um, bringing up, um, I guess, like, just the world of tattooing and the anomaly that it is even within the arts world. Um, you know, as you know, this series is called Ink Therapy. I feel like one of my main goals is to focus on, you know, the ways that this industry serves people in more than just, like, you know, the, the physical... Um, you know, manifestations of, of the art that we see, like it's so much deeper than that. So my question to you would be, why do you think tattooing is so therapeutic to so many people? And is it therapeutic to you? Well, first getting tattooed hurts to me. So I don't know if that, uh, no, I'll, I'll Number A, tattooing hurts. Let's well, disclaimer. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll get that off. That is the number one question people ask me all the time. Um, no, I think it is. You have to get in a mind frame, and it's you know some people need need that like 
distraction from, you know, reality. Sure. Um, and then, you know, whenever I get tattooed, I mean, the last time I can remember I got, uh, Dave Koenig was tattooing my back and we were doing back to back sessions. So it was like two days in a row on like both sides of my ribs. And like the second day I was just like in the zone. Like I try to get myself in that very like, you know, lethargic like trying to like you're not asleep the process, but, right? you know just and um you know dave's good about it but he was like you know trying to trying to keep me you know like talk we were talking art and stuff like that and at some point i'm just like not responding i just needed to you know there's so much going on um but it is nice to kind of get away and just you know it's you and you're kind of figuring out like hey this sucks, but I'm gonna get through what I want. Like, sure. I don't know. It's a it's a kind of a mind over matter thing, and I do appreciate that aspect of you know getting tattooed, and you know you you have to earn it, and you know it's kind of like a mental testing your mental strength, I guess. Um, and it and it's something you can't really get, you know, from anything else. Um, I don't know. Like I said. I've, I've felt like one of those, uh, I guess, dominatrixes is at some point, and people have uh, referenced to that. I'm like, I don't enjoy the, the, pain. <laughs> yeah, I don't, en I don't enjoy doing it to anybody. I promise. Um, and I don't, en you know, it's the the least enjoyable part of my job is inflicting pain on people. But you know, some people do enjoy it. Um, I still think people are weird if they enjoy getting stabbed with a needle, putting that on on record. Um, it's a little strange. <laughs> But it is de it is definitely like um, it is a therapeutic thing. But but besides the the whole pain thing, I'm yeah. still not still not down with that. It still hurts. For I'll sure. Tell everybody no, that. I yeah, I love your mention of the mental strength. I can definitely identify with that. I also love how you mentioned just like zoning out and being one with yourself. I think that most of like my I would say a number of my most like reflective times have been when I'm getting tattooed um, and I'm able to be even more clear minded, um, you know, workout issues or stresses that I've been feeling for that day um, and just like problem solve like I've never done before. And I'm not sure what it is about being put in that position that does it. But I think it has something to do with what you said about, you know, just that challenge of overcoming, you know, that sensation of pain for sure. Um, but I'm curious what you think about, so the pain is one thing, right? But then the yeah. permanence is another. So maybe talk to me about what you're thinking about why it's so important for so many people to have such a permanent stamp of, of something, whether it be something that they have been through, something that they hope for, you know, whatever, all these reasons that people get tattoos. What do you think is the importance around having such a permanent representation of that. Well, I think the whole being permanent thing is a is a bigger, you know, kind of point for me. Like it I most of the tattoos that I have like the actual image isn't the important part. It's I can remember where I was, what I was doing, wow. who did it, um, you know, at that time. Um, you know, I think people put too much like emphasis on like every tattoo needs to mean something so important. Um, and if that's what you want, then that's fine. But for me, you know, I would be real narcissistic if I said that like everything that I had meant like something super um, crazy or meaningful um, to me. A lot of it is just, you know, I wanted to get tattooed by either that person or, you know, it just remembers a time in my life and, and I can tell you where I got it, who did it. Um, and, you know, in that relationship and, you know, in that time. Um, so I, I try to tell people, don't put as much emphasis on, like, you know, I need 12 butterflies with every person in my family, you know. Like, and if you have, you know, 17 names on you, that's fine, and that's what you want. But, you know, I personally don't, you know. It may be because I don't do a whole lot of, like, script and lettering, but, um, no, it's... It, they don't have to like the, the actual you know thing doesn't have to mean you know something crazy important um 
you can say, hey, I was feeling this way, so I got, you know, a sure. dragon and fighting a tiger. I don't know. Like, it doesn't have to make sense to everybody else. I, I wish people would, uh, you know, not put so much weight in what other people thought. You know, it's going on you. You're going to have to see it every day. Um, and that's completely probably off topic, but uh, no, I, I, I have a tendency yeah, to rant. Yeah, it's not about other people. It's not about, you know, what it might appear to represent at the end of the day it might just be like you said like where you were when you got it who you were with the artist that it was done by like all of those things are meaningful attributes to you know the work as well so i think for people to just like summarize tattoo tattoo work is like oh it's just what i see and like oh 12 butterflies like you must really love butterflies like it may not be as simple as that um, yeah so yeah. people people put people do it too much stock into like the either the literal meaning or what you know somebody else thinks about it like you know i remember where i was i got my son's initials you know oh big knees did it for me um i know exactly where i was you know it was a birthday present from him i got it when i was in dallas um and then that night we did a bunch of shots with a bunch of strippers yes. you know so yes. <laughs> and there you go. And I can, the you know, there's a story behind most of them, you know. Maybe not a very good story, but a good story. I love maybe. it. I love it. I need you to call my mom after that and tell her that story so she can just like lay off me about some of the tattoos that I have. <laughs> you know, there's. Um, um, <laughs> I love how you uh, speak a lot about like relationships and how meaningful they are. That makes me think a lot about um, your work with Dusal. So can you tell me a little bit about your initial vision for Dusal, how it came about, and um, tell everybody like what it is. Of course, I'm a huge fan, but I feel like you can, you know. Uh, you're, by, you're biased, you're biased. A little Very bit biased. more, you're the professional. So yeah, um, tell us about the convention. Yes, uh, well, I started it uh, six years ago, I guess. Um, and I just wanted to bring, you know, a quality tattoo convention, um, or tattoo event to the, to the South. Cause we have a, we have a lack of like really cool, like tattoo events, um, down here. I think, you know, we have, there's quite a few in Florida. There's a, you know, a handful in like Atlanta, but you're really only going to get maybe six or so and there's a you know another handful in in texas you know but texas is like a whole nother state um or a whole nother country so that's you know um so there's just not a whole lot that you're gonna get and that was my whole um like idea behind it i wanted to kind of bring like tattooers that i knew to you know where i grew up and lived and i wanted to show them so it was kind of like a, I'm, you know, I'm, I love where I'm from. I'm, I've lived here, you know, not my entire life. I've, you know, went to college and, and all that stuff. Um, but I love it down here. And I wanted to, to kind of show everyone, like, you know, what, what it was. Because um, most people, when you're like, oh, I'm from Mississippi, they're like, well, so you live in like a cotton field and you, you pick cotton. <laughs> Most people say, um, and it's happened multiple times. Like I've even like, not even like overseas, like I'd be tattooing overseas and, you know, I expected them to like not know much about Mississippi. Um, but then there's like people in, you know, California or Ohio that are like, you have all your teeth. You're, you're obviously not right. from Mississippi. And you come with all uh, this bias and stereotypes. Yeah. So, um, and so I'm trying to, you know, be like, hey, we're more than just, you know, that, that stereotype. Um, and, you know, that was my only kind of, you know, option, kind of bringing tattooers that I knew um, or didn't know to, you know, an event that we had to put on. And luckily, um, we have Christina Jackson, who is the... Um, Very heart, uh, The heart and soul and uh of do south she makes sure that we do 
what we need to get done. Um, she keeps me on track and she knows that she has to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and then she leaves me with, you know, W. Um, and that's just, she knows like, okay, he's going to do this and this, and then I just got to do everything else. Um, so if, yeah, if Christina, Christina was around. Matt's team is comprised of a lot of women, <laughs> which they, is brilliant. Have, brilliant. And, so shout out to his lovely wife, Jenna. Shout out to Christina. Like, he definitely has an awesome team. And I, and I worked it out so that both of the, the two main women in my life that control most of everything um, have the same birthday. So I only have to remember one birthday, and it's St. Patrick's Day. Um, oh. So I did that on purpose, if you didn't know. Smart man. So it keeps me happy for, to remember a lot less. So St. Patrick's Day, I know I got to get a lot of gifts. Um, and Love it. <laughs> it saves me a lot of headache. So, uh, but no, without those two lovely ladies, um, do South um, and Twisted Anchor probably wouldn't, wouldn't be a thing or be as successful as, you know, they had been. So shout out to those sure. two beautiful ladies. Yes, cheers to them. Um, I think that exactly what you said, I, I, I will second it 100%. Do South is changing the way that people view the South, view specifically Mississippi. Um, you know, you have artists from around the country, if not around the world, correct me if I'm wrong, but who come and just do some of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. Like, if you all have not checked out do south go to their instagram page right now um it's do south tattoo expo um check out any videos people have posted on youtube the tattoo competitions like the the stuff that is coming out of this tattoo convention is like stuff you've never been seen never seen before so um i digress um i will <laughs> always toot the do south horn um, I think it's an amazing convention, and I can't wait to see where it goes in the next com uh, couple of years. Well, um, we will see, we will see what happens, you know, in this next year. It's still up in the in the air for this year with all the um, the stuff that's going on. You know, right now it was, it was it was it was the it was the last tattoo convention in the world uh, for 2020, and, or as of right now. So, if the world ended right now, guess what? That's what we, we had. History. We were the last tattoo convention in the world. My buddy Matt Driscoll, who finally made his appearance at Due South this year after, you know, saying he was going to be here um, for four or five years. Um, it was like messaging me the other day and he said, how, how does it feel to be the, the last tattoo convention uh, in the world? Great. I was like, you know what? I was a lot more upset about it you know, the month, like, you know, the week before, oh the week gosh. of, Remember and then, <laughs> yeah, I was just waiting for, like, people to, like, show up in hazmat suits. Um, <laughs> every day we walked down there, I was, like, waiting for it to happen, and, um, oh, we did it, we appropriately social distanced, there was a little hugging, you we, know, but we did it. mask on, it was, it was, uh, I feel like tattoo artists in general are already very good about taking proper health precautions, right? Just because it's like a, that's most, a most of them are. <laughs> right, most, most of them. Are. There's, there's right. the exceptions. There's always the exceptions, um, which is which is up there on my uh, um, kind of pet peeves about going overseas and tattooing. Yeah. I've seen, I was like, that's, that's not gross. sanitary. Don't, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Well, I love that you brought that up because that was actually one of my next questions. Uh, we're going to move into um, some fun questions. We're halfway through um, right now. I'm going to keep you just for 15 more minutes. Uh, but I'm eager to hear about some of your pet peeves as a tattoo artist. What gets under Matt Sedley's skin? You should probably ask Dylan that because Dylan would definitely know most. Is he number one on the list? Dylan knows most of them and is the person that does most of those he things. He embodies most of them. And I feel like he does them on purpose at this point. Like me and me and Dylan Sarden have been, you know, working together for 
Oh, like seven or eight years now. Um, and if you don't know, everyone should check out uh, Dylan Sarton. Um, his stuff's amazing. He's doing really cool stuff. Um, but no, he has been with me for so long. I feel like he knows exactly how to piss me off. And sometimes he likes to do it and see how, see my reaction. Um, which, so give us some give us some stuff. What are what are what are um, some but I'll, in, I'll give you the ones. The just, Dylan, I'll, I won't even do those because that's not fair. Um, my a lot of my biggest things are let's see pet peeves in the tattoo industry. Um, phone like with technology, phones and iPads and like Apple Watches and you know people touching stuff that's not covered. It's like you know. That's gross. You should know better. You know, don't don't do it. Um, but then clients, clients is I've I tend to to scold clients very frequently, a day, like maybe three or four times a day sometimes, depending on my client. Um, touching their tattoo, like we're tattooing, we're taking a break. You know, we wipe down. Like, what do you think? I mean, they're they're like this. I'm like. <laughs> Ah, like, right here. I just saw you like scratch your ass and like <laughs> now you want to touch her and it's like well it's my blood <laughs> that's another pet peeve it's your blood but you're going to take your dirty little hand right. and then touch something else and it's like I have to like break it down to some people it's like okay well so you're going to take your hands that are covered in your bio which are yours it's cool it's fine you're gross um, but you're going to touch something of mine in the shop, right. I'm going to touch it, not knowing that, you know, you know, you've touched it, you know, and then say I go home and then I have, I have a wife and kids that I care much more for than you right. client that is cross contaminating. Not that I don't love my clients, please. If anyone's, you know, sees no, it, and love all my clients, just not as much as my kids. Right. Um, most of the time. Um, but, you know, it's a whole cross-contamination thing that people aren't aware of or don't think about. Um, and I, so I have to remind people on a daily basis that, like, just because it's yours now doesn't mean you can't, like, one Pass touch one thing, home. touch another. Just don't touch open skin, blood, things like that. It's gross. Please don't. And it affects, uh, it might affect your healing, you know, so at the end of the day... Yeah, and you'll see, you'll see you'll see a lot of times people will come in and be like, my, my tattoo's irritated or, or this and that. But it's you see them, they're, you know, touching, you know, if you touch your skin, you you don't know what else you've touched, doorknobs and things like that. It's it's something that it's not sanitary and that does cause, you know, infection and, and all that stuff. So sure. it's the, not the fun to deal with. old hard truth of cross-contamination. Yeah. No, for real. I definitely appreciate you mentioning that. So speaking of that and the stress that clients can sometimes bring upon you as a, as a tattoo artist, what is the most interesting or most odd ask that a client has ever had for you? Interesting or odd? Uh, let's see. I, this was easy. Um, I had a gentleman, Ben, that works with me, and uh, he asked me to tattoo a spider skull on his taint. I'm sorry. Um. Yep, <laughs> that is it. It used to be for years, it was a very hard question. People would ask me, what's the weirdest tattoo? And it was like, I tattooed like a smurf on a nipple or like, you know, something, you know, on like somebody's ass or something. No, but... Tattooing the spider on the taint was definitely hands Is that down the, the strange part of skin between the balls and the bell. It, it is that that little, and I say little, like <laughs> Ben's lucky enough to have the largest taint that uh, I've ever Large seen. Large enough for a spider skull. Like, yes. So like, it's a it's solid about, size taint. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like. It's up there on on like taint size. I don't know. I've never measured mine. <laughs> I honestly don't know what mine. I actually know what his looks like more than mine. So, wow. 
but it is it well, is up thank there. You for your service <laughs> uh, for that sacrifice. I'm sure uh, that he loves it. I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he does. I know he's not probably going to get it tattooed again. Um, I'm, yeah, I feel like the pain, you know how they have like the pain meter, like illustrations? He the, says it's not that. And, and I know like Ben's got his, you know, Ben's got his whole front, you know, his whole back and, you know, okay. uh, his legs and stuff. And he's, it's, it's really, he said it wasn't as, it wasn't that bad. Okay. I'm going to take his word for it because. Great. Maybe that's going to be the new trend. I hope not. <laughs> I do. I do. I hope not. It was definitely the one of the most challenging tattoos I've ever tattooed. Um, <laughs> not only from the position that I had to be in to like. Was there skin get stretching in there. involved? Did you have to? I mean, he did. He didn't very well. Like he definitely helped me out on on the stretching. Okay. Uh, but he had he made some custom boxers with like a whole cutout um, and you know, we had to like figure out how to kind of get in there. And it's so um, considerate for him to come prepared with the custom boxers. Yeah. Except that he ate, he was like, a, well, he came in to like, um, right as he's about to like put the stencil on and his girlfriend like walks in, they got Taco Bell. And I'm like, you dick. Like you're going <laughs> to eat Taco Bell right before I'm going to spend like an hour. Like, Right there. In this spot. He's like, oh, man, I didn't even think about that. And I was like, yeah. He didn't bring you a chalupa or anything? Mm, no. <laughs> but, no, it was it was an interesting thing. It was probably the first and last time I'll ever tattoo. Uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, we're going to move quickly into uh, uh, our last portion of the interview, which is what I like to call the lightning round. Um, this is going to be, um, I decided on this or that, if that's okay with you. Okay. I told you. Um, we're going to do it very quick. fast. You, you, there's not a lot of thinking that goes into this, right? It's just right. whatever comes to your soul, that's the one you choose, right? There's no second guessing yourself. You just go for it. So everybody knows how this or that works. But if you do not, very briefly, I'm going to give that an options of, blank or blank he's going to choose one and then we're going to move on and your mind is just going to oh. wander and linger and be like well why did he choose that one and now i have to do some more research about him and find out who he is as a person and his childhood and upbringing and why he chose that so we like to to, to add a little suspense to this so that's how we're going to end uh this session so are you ready i'm ready i'm actually scared about it we'll figure it out let's go this is a mixture of tattoo this or that and regular this or that, so. Got it. You gotta stay on your toes. I'm not even thinking about it. I don't even know what we're doing right now. Go. <laughs> Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Tattoo shop or private studio? Tattoo shop. Color or black and gray? Color. Inside or outside? Outside. Mag or liner? Liner. Charmin or Angel Soft? Neither. <laughs> Charmin or Angel Soft? <laughs> Angel Soft. I don't even know why I said neither. I'm not even thinking about it. <laughs> uh, stencil or freehand? Freehand. Tattoo artist or tattooist? Tattoo artist. Sauna or hot tub? Hot tub. Lettering or illustration? Illustration. Jackson or Jordan? Jackson. Large scale or micro? Three, oh, two. Large scale. <laughs> I, I was saying, okay. I was like, I was trying to think of, like, con I was thinking of context. I was thinking of context. Okay, okay, okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Well, thank you so much uh, for, for playing that, that round of, of this or that. Um, I think next time I get you on here, we're definitely going to have to do Never Have I Ever, um, especially after the, the tape story. I just think there's some more things that, that the people need to know about you. That, that definitely took a, a lot longer to explain than I that I'd anticipated. That was definitely the climax of the conversation, but it wasn't the most interesting part of the 
conversation. I mean, it was up there. <laughs> well, so I've actually talked. I've actually talked about. Live. Matt likes to tattoo. No, we're not gonna do. Yeah, no, I've I've actually spent mo more of my more time talking about Ben's taint than I have a lot of things, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <laughs> so if you're ever at a tattoo convention and you get a random sp uh, like spider taint photo, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm going to text you immediately. <laughs> I see. I've got to save it on my phone. I promise. There's been random people. There's probably people that are going to find out that it was me sending them random taint photos now because of this, and they're going to be upset. Um, DM so me whenever you're attached, photo. everybody who's watching, just please DM me a picture of your taint so that I can send it to Matt. We can measure it out for a custom tattoo. We'll do size comparison. We'll do some collab work. Um, yeah, we'll we'll make it we'll make it happen, and we'll post it. <laughs> I I I can't. It's the only thing that I've ever had deleted off of Instagram. <laughs> it is, so I can't post it because I've already <laughs> had it deleted oh as the only thing that I've ever had deleted or Good removed from Instagram. All right, Ben's so so we won't post it. We won't but post just, it again. We'll just know in our hearts that it happened. <laughs> All right, Matt, I appreciate you being such a good sport this evening. Um, thank you again for your time, for joining this Ink Therapy podcast. Thank you for everybody who joined. This is our first one, one of many. Um, we have a few uh, um, coming up in the next couple of weeks, so make sure that you turn on your post notifications. Follow Matt Stebley right now. Follow Do South Tattoo Convention right now. If you are not following me, follow me for all the updates on Ink Therapy. Um, and we'll see you at the next appointment. Thanks again, Matt. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>